Hmm. Well, tanguna ako na kayo mga kalaista. This is um fairly better than the last episode. Ganito yon. They were um they are um in this town we're in. Lahat ng residente rito dilawang mata. So, well, lahat sila nakapansin. And when they were finally able to get um to get a place to stay, uh, na conclude nila ni Hakai, person um particularly that dumaan na si Hazel dito. When they came from having dinner in one of the restaurants, the um the receptionist of the hotel recommended, ayun na, nandun na sila Hazel at Kat doon sa room ni, sa kwarto nila. And, okay, nagkumustahan. And, um, meron to siyang hinahanap na tao. No, a demon, to be exact. Na su- super lakas daw. And, well, according to, according to him, needs to be taken out as ASAP. ASAP. They now retired to their room. Sila Hazel and Kat. Ano yung nagkakwentuhan about Hazel's uh, past. Particularly, yung unang meeting niya with Okoku. If he figured that, um, if Okoku stands for the darkness, Kenjo Sanzo stands for light. So, yun yung, yun yung theory niya. And, well, we now, uh, the episode now focuses on their, on conver- on this conversation between Sanzo and Goku. Na, napag-usapan nila, uh, itinanong nila ni, ni Sanzo kay Goku, ikaw ba, do you want to be, um, do you want to be brought back to life after dying? So, after all, um, all the hype, <laughs> Uh, after all the hype he made, Goku just said, No, I'm good with it. No, I'm good. <laughs> Final scene. Sansa was about to leave uh, Goku kasi sinabi niya, Get your ass to bed. Tutulog na ako. Pahala ka. Iwanan kita. So, he was he was actually on his way to, um, on his way to, back to their room. And suddenly, biglang may, biglang may umatake kay Goku. This assailant knew where to hit where to hit the monkey king himself. Dito, right across the chest here. And ang gulat na lang ni Sanzo. Uy, teka. Sino yung mataki ni Goku? Let's break this episode down now, critic sub style. Pace. The pacing only got tense during that final scene. The rest of it was, uh, no, hindi naman excruciating, but it was slow, but compared to the last episode, hindi siya ano eh, hindi siya, uh, what I did those off a little when I was reviewing this episode. Okay, I gotta admit, kasi, for a fact, hindi, hindi na ako natutulog ng tanghalian. Hindi ako natutulog ng tanghali, right? I don't take naps, uh, I, I haven't been taking naps in the past few years na. So, siguro dala na rin ng, nang need ng body kong mag-nap kaya ako na ganun pero um, again compared to the last episode mas may laman ang slowness ng pacing na to ng episode na to because okay after um, after um, after some R&R and of course dumating sila Hazel at Kat nagpa, nagpakita, nagpakita uli and kinumusta yung kinumusta ang team sa Yuki light moments then of course the backstory sequence na I overall I couldn't find it boring eh. kasi I wasn't interested in uh, in Hazel's past but I was dead interested in uh, on what he had to say when he met when he first met Okoku Ito pala ang nag ang nagmana ng mutant scripture. Kasi there kasi lahat ng mga Sanzu priests, may, there's a particular scripture that they are that they are trying to protect. Yung kay Genjo Sanzo, yun ang ang pinoprotecting the the scripture that uh that involves light. 
Okay? Ito naman kay Ukoko, nasa kanya ang scripture of darkness, the mutant scripture. So, nakita lang niya talaga na well, Hazel saw first hand, ah, uh, how old was he? Uh, 11, 12, 11, 10 years old? 12? Hazel saw how deadly, how dangerous Okoko's magic is. Dito niya nakita. First hand. Kung potentially kung gano'ng kasamang pwede maging si Okoko. Because he does hold the, the mutant scripture. So, Uh, that that me for me that was in that was the interesting part of this backstory. Potential na kalaban ito ng team Sayuki si Okoko because he is also a Sanzo. Katulad ng Sanzo natin sa team Sayuki. Right? It's not uncommon for Sanzo priests for Sanzos basically to um to be at odds with each other. Because of course The scripture they hold is the scripture they advocate. Bottom line. Kaya, well, do I have complaints when it comes to the pacing of this episode? Mm, no. Nope. Kahit may sleeper moment ako, kahit may sleeper moment ako nakita rito. I got no complaints. Kasi, better this one than the last episode. <laughs> I'll take this episode anytime. Flow naman. First gear shift here was um what you call this? Nung nagpakita uli sila Hazel at Kat sa team sa Yugi. Right? Oh, why did I why did I call this a gear shift? Number one, it triggered the episode. And number two, yeah, it was a funny move because it also triggered the the, the another conversation sequence that had a A, uh, a slightly hilarious ending kasi dito <laughs> nagpakita talaga ng angas dito si Hakai okay na, na talagang nakipag-angasan siya rito kay Hazel he did something different here and talagang medyo natawa ako eh but that's why I called it a gear shift kasi what uh, you can also say that through this gear shift business has pick up once again for Team Sayuki because Hazel and Gat have showed themselves again. With that in mind, yes, totoo, business has picked up. Second gear shift was when Hazel started um, telling his backstory as to how as to how he met Okoko. No brainer of a gear shift, folks. Because this is the gear shift wherein you can explore how Uh, how much of a big bad Okoko can be? Okay, he has this dark power, but yet has um, enough enough chops na mag na 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 magsalita na parang na para talaga mongha to uh, to a child like Hazel at the time. So. Yeah, he, he just saw his potential here as a villain, si Okoko. No, by all indications, I would love to see Okoko and Team Sayuki go at it. Talagang, yun ang, yun ang, yun ang mga pagkakabangan natin dito eh. Alright, final gear shift is of course the final scene. Again, a no-brainer of a gear shift. If you would deep dive into that gear shift, go back to the sequence where Hazel and Gat were conversing. Meron kasing hinala si Hazel dito kay Goku that he is the um uh, what you call it the son the son ko basta Satan ang, ang last part ng tawag niya tawag allegedly kay Goku and uh, the one thing that that suppresses his powers is that crown he wears that, that's according to Hazel but If you would look into uh, the legend of Sayuki, particularly that part with the Monkey King, yun talaga ang nagsusupress sa powers ng Monkey King. You take that off, he will 
uh, he, he will he will lay ruin to the world. That's according to the legend. Hey, okay? now if I'm wrong on this, mm, comment below. Okay, prove me wrong. So, yun ang hinala ni Hazel. But we can't just tie um, the attack on Goku in the fire in this gear shift to Hazel, because. Team Sayoki don't consider Hazel and Gat to be enemies right now. They're just competition. But sa, sa dami ng adventures ng Team Sayoki, you just can't pinpoint who attacked Goku in this gear shift. It will set off events not just in the next episode but in the next few episodes. Yun ang tingin ko rito. So these three gear shifts that I saw, Okay, the last two will play a role down the line in this um in this particular Sayuki series. Plot wise, ne, di ko masabi malinis eh. Plancha do po ang plot, mainly because of Hazel's backstory. Kasi uh that. Uh, that took up almost half the episode. And for good reason. Because dito talaga pinakita kong uh, kung gano ka delikadong kalaban si Ukoko. And knowing for a fact that he is also a Sanzo. Kale, ka-level ni Genjo ito ng Team Sayuki. Ka-level niya ito. So, it would be interesting if um, Team Sayuki would cross paths with this um, with this fellow, based on uh, based on the based on this iron this well ironed out plot. So uh, it now it now gives us a good idea of how uh, how deadly uh, an enemy an enemy Okoko can be. Okay? If it weren't for a plot this well ironed out, hindi natin malalaman eh, yung full potential. Okay? And, yeah, eventually they will cross paths and hope it, uh, hope it makes a great finale. So, pace, flow, and plot, they all came together for this episode, folks. So, Sayugi Reload Zero In, Episode 6, Deserve. Two thumbs up. Mainly because of the backstory. I hate to say it, but ito nagpaganda sa episode na to. We now know uh, of how deadly Okoko's power is. And the potential of him being the being the uh, being the boss villain of this particular Sayuki series. I'm saying eh, the possibility is really high na. Nagpakita na siya ng kapangyarihan kasi dito. Yan. Wow! I can't wait for the uh, for the confrontation between him and Team Sayuki. Kaya, tutupamor tayo. So again, Sayuki Reload Zero in Episode 6. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this. Wow, this great Sayuki series, mga kalaysa. Galing bumawi. Ang lakas bumawi. So Patreon, wait for my next upload. And for those of you who are still stuck with the CHD, well, just follow what this uh, what this hand is uh, what this hand is telling you. Until next time, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. So, look, I see my episode when um, Reto. Uh, Sui and Kuroda were checking out this um this old hospital. This was actually the hospital na kung saan nagsimula ang pandemic ng MK virus. This is exactly where um where, Tan- where Tanaguchi-san's husband uh died. He was the first victim of the MK virus. So they had to check it out kasi baka merong makuwang clues dito si Rito. And that will, uh, that will help him in his research. 
Dan Itu lepas si Kyoji Ya, yeah, the other Si number one um, Came up with the idea of um, Going out of, uh, of the complex to To make with other women Meron siya natin po ang Meron siya nakita ang girl dito uh, Dito sa refugee area Na talagang natipuhan niya This girl happens to be Mahiru! Diyos ko! Nakiusap na lang yung, yung mga tendan niya na kay Rayto na kung pwede, na, kung pwede i... Kung, baga, kung pwede rin umakit ng ligaw si Kyoji dun sa, sy- syempre, magpapaalam sa kuya si Rayto. So yun nga, nakita yung dalawa and todo... Um, what you this? Nagmang like, makaawa na si Kyoji na na... Na gusto, na gusto niya makipagkilala doon sa kapatid ni Rito. Eh, sabi na lang ni Rito. Alright. Sige, papahig ako. Pero, I can't promise you. Eventually, they went out on a date with Rito as Mahiru siya. Pero, of course, eh, kuye. So, karapatan niya yun. Unfortunately, Mahiru finds uh, finds uh, Kyoji boring. So, nag-sorry na lang si, si Reto kay Kyoji. And, right there, sinabi ni Kyoji. Something to this effect. Binasted niya ako. <laughs> so, while this, uh, while this, while these liner moments were going on, um, there was a situation happening na at U, at UW Japan headquarters. Meron na silang natatanggap ng reports na na gulo rito, gulo roon, rayo dito, rayo toon within Japan. Pero they've also received reports from uh, from their international counterparts. Same situation from their end. So, pero ang pinag-uugatan nito, food rations, not the men, but food rations. So sinuggest ni ni Rea ni ni Katagiri na but di natin i, i field in si Rito to to help to help us give out the food rations. Eh, para siyempre, para mapakalma yung mga ta- para mapakalma yung mga tao. And what? Pumayos si Director Kihara. Binaling na sa kanya ni ni Rhea yung binaling na kay Rito yung photo frame na pinobaya sa kanya ni, ni Tani Gucci-san bago, bago na matay. So, um, in one bathroom break, he tested out kasi uh, nagre-react to one another yung photo frame at yung kumbaga smartwatch niya. So, tinestingan niya. So, nandito siya sa, nandito siya sa isang cubicle. Tinapyam ganun yung photo frame. Pa! Meron lumabas na blueprint. Ang title, um, how to, how to create an artificial male killer virus. Puta! Ito ang ikinamatay ng matanda. Later on, in one scene, um, nag-gets kagad ni Akane at ni Kuroda na uh, Rito's feeling uneasy after that bathroom break. So, pinas- pinasok nila ito sa shower room. And what? Well, no one is... Um, no one is keeping a close watch on anybody when it, when it comes to um, when it comes to bathrooms, all right? So, ayun nga, sina- tinanong ni ano, ni ni Akane si Rito. Rito. You found out something about the um uh, about the uh, about the lack of research, right? So, right there and then um Rhea, ah, Rhea. Si Koroda at si Akane ang na-declare na ito talagang tutulungan si Rito. And well, they they're now they have, uh, they're now employing black hat tactics. Kumbaga, hindi na nalalaman ng UW ang gagawin nila. So, they chose uh, an area in the refugee area to, uh, to serve as their underground headquarters. Ayun. So, even Sui is now in it on the plan. To um, do, do some underground research Okay, sige So, tama-tama Nandun sa refugee area 
And at the same time, yung uh, yung distribution drive na kasama si Rito. Okay, so they can do it at the same time. Final scene. Kurota suddenly finds the names of prominent um prominent doctors, pharmacologists in the in the hospital record yung uh, Kato City and then yung yung hospital na pinuntahan nila noon in the opening scene. Nakita na naman pangalan even yung yung friend niya who was supposed to be in America at that time. Pero nandito ang pangalan niya sa registry of five years ago. Well, yeah, when the pandemic started. So, nagtaka siya. So, pinakita niya sa tatlo. Ano niya ba kung ano naging assumption ni Rato after this? This was probably the venue where the MK virus was first developed. We're going to break this episode down now. Critic sub style. Pace! I don't know, kasi... Naging... Naging tense ang episode nung nung may pinakita ng sniper. That was the only time uh, the pacing picked up. But um, first half, hindi. It was a slow but eye-opening pacing. Bakit? Because well, as I said earlier, dito sa episode na to, well, nalaman natin na lesbiana pala si Rhea. No wonder she's a man-hater. <laughs> she revealed it here in this episode and the pacing will make you realize that. Alright? Pero talaga, pumingka pa pacing nung, nagpaki- nung, nung, nung may pinakita ng sniper. Talagang sight set na on on putting a bullet through Rito's head. Eh, yeah, it was tense. It was scary. Because this is probably the first attempt on Rito's life. Wow, right? But do I have complaints? No! It went fast when it needed to be, and it was slow when it uh when it when it needs to be. Yun lang yun. Flow naman. First gear shift here was um was when during that um uh, that spa scene we're in well Kinopronta ni ni Akane si Rhea and just said and just asked about um about her whereabouts during during the time of uh, during the time of uh, Tanaguchi San's death. So I thought, mm, gear shift. To. Okay, the way I see it, um, Rhea is a strong suspect here because well because uh, she was assigned by the UW to to um to be Rato's personal assistant, replacing Suwo. So, well, for for one thing, she cannot perform her function if she hates men. Being a lesbian in in this uh, in this um, in this setting, nope, it's out of the question. That was a that was a really ten, that was a tense gear shift. Pero it did not affect the pacing at that point. Talaga, it was still slow. So, second gear shift was when this was the gear shift that um, that put the episode on on a lighter side of things. It was the it was the scene where Kyoji first laid eyes on on uh, on Mahiru. <laughs> it's a no brainer of a gear shift because what's gonna happen now to Kyoji's uh, immense sex drive. Ngayon meron na siya napupusuang girl. And then, who also happens to be Kratos' younger sister. One thing about this, well, one thing about this gear shift is this. Kyoji is slowly uh, knowing his place when he is around Rato. Because if he wants to get, if he wants to gain Makiro's affection, yeah, syempre. Yeah. He can't go directly to Makiru to, um, to, to, to court her. So he might as well, uh, he might as well, uh, get on Rito's good side. Pakasakali. So, pwede siyang gawing, uh, uh, 
Kumaga, pwede siyang ireto ni Rito. <laughs> final gear shift was the final scene. It was a total shock to me. Right? So, I had to classify this one as a gear shift. Kasi, this is a major breakthrough in Rato's investigation of the MK virus in his quest for a cure. Tama sinabi ni, ni Erisa nun in her videotape recording for Rato. The world is full of lies. Well, that gear shift confirms it. Yup. The UW has been lying to humanity all this time regarding the MK virus. So these three gear shifts that I saw, yeah, all of them will, will play, will be a factor down the line. Will be factors down the line when we enter the second half of this anime's run. Remember, mga lifestyle, we are at the halfway point of this anime already. It's episode 6. 11 episodes lang po ang World's End Harem. Excuse me. Plot wise. Malinis ang plot, folks. Bakit? Yung! Yung! Ah, uh, yung! Pagkaka-in-love ni ni Kyoji kay Makiru, it, it, uh, it formed direct ties to the main protag. So, it tagged along the main continuity of the episode because of that incident. Because of that, uh, because of that scene. So, you now are, you are now tying Kyoji to Reito because of Makiru. Kasi ki, Kyoji now has feelings for Makiru. Talagang, Na love at first sight rito, even though she's only 16. Alright? So, yeah, Rito finds that scary. <laughs> you really need a, um, a really solid and clean plot to make the viewer understand that scenario. This was the scene that really, um, uh, that really emphasized the, the one and only continuity of this episode. And, yeah, you know, in a world like uh, like this in World's End Harem, we're we're all still connected. The the connections, uh, the connections are much easier to easier to make. Kasi hindi naganong araming tao ni sa mundo. That's what the plot made me realize just now. Kasi ganong kalinis. So pace, flow, and plot. They all came together for this episode, mga ka lifestyle. So. World's End Harem Episode 6? Yeah. Deserve. Two thumbs up. Okay. Let's talk about the repercussions uh, that, will, that will be brought about by this episode. Number one. Yung, of course, yung, yung sex drive ngayon ni Kyoji. Now that he has, um, not obvious, now that he has fallen in love with uh, with Mahiru, will he still um, will he still be um, mentally able to um, yeah to um, to to make babies We've yet to, uh, well that's yet to be answered and that's yet to be seen but uh, very confident that they're going to tackle that subject in in the second half of this anime's run. Second, who created that fucking virus? May suspect na si Reito that the MK virus was first developed in that hospital because most of the um the leading pharmacologists in Japan nandune even. I said most of them, some of them are actually friends of Kod of uh, of Kuroda. Kaya niya nak nakita kaga yung pangalan eh. So if I were in Rito's shoes, I would take the same thing. Bakit? Nandun lahat sa isang hospital na yon. Ito mga sikat na pangalan to. Why did they just die all of us all of the, all of a sudden? 
in that same hospital. So yun. Kagad, dinijus ni Rito na. Oh my God. Baka, baka dito dinevelop yung virus na yun ah. So, well, Kuroda herself said it in, in that scene where yung shower scene na uh, silang tatlo. Akane said that you, he was to, she, she was uh, talking to Rito about this. Akane said not to trust the directors. Even Rhea. And sinigunda naman siya ni Kurot ni, ni Akane that but you should not trust you should not trust uh, Rhea. All they want All they wanted to do uh, is to satisfy this country. Something to that effect. Ganon na sabi. So, dami. Alright? Despite the, um, yeah, the breast exposure, the, the lewdness, there is an underlying conspiracy here na dapat ninyong tutukan. This, um, the, uh, the lewdities, the ludities, they're just a distraction. The real storyline is in the origin of the MK virus. Kaya I don't care I don't care about I don't care about what you think guys. If you think it's a hentai, go ahead. Wala namang sex scene dito eh. It's a borderline hentai. Yes, kasi may breast exposure, may lewdness, merong yep, lesbian moments. Mhm. Meron talaga. It's expected because there are 5 billion women, 5 billion women, and there are only five men who are awake, <laughs> who are awake right now. Natural. May meron magigilis biyana chat. So, well, tutukan pa natin ang anime na to, guys, because um, judging the first half of its run, I'd say it's a fucking good anime, story wise, okay, story wise. Daragang. It's well worth your time. Whether you're, whether you're too caught up on the lewdness or the underlying conspiracy theory. Ako, both. <laughs> so again, World's End Harem Episode 6. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this great anime, mga kamaista. Oh, mukha may, mukha marami si Reto tinatago ang hospital na to. Yeah, ready right, to look into it even deeper. So Patreon, wait for my next upload. And if you're still, st- uh, to, and to all of you who are still stuck with the CHD, chill lang. Just look at the, just look at that finger pointing. But until then, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. What? Carry over from final scene of the last episode. Bigyan na bumulag ta si Yuri. So natural. Eh, Hoshi pala is the chief of security of this ano naman. Of this. Siya pala chief of security ng kay Yuri. So he gave out the orders. Okay. Yung tatlong, yung tatlong nakabantay dyan, pasokin nyo na yung kwarto ni Yuri. Tignan, check on her. So, they did. Pero, Biglang humarap si Yuring ganon, pinagtitira ng red arrow yung tatlo. So, lo and behold, she now has three slaves. So, eh, sinabi na lang niya, I want to escape from here. Please assist me. Ayun. <laughs> so, binigyan na siya ng proper escape route kung saan dadaan. And of course, eh, yung, of course, uh, nagsilbing mga bodyguards sa mga to. Then, she, well, she eventually escaped, pero, In a really weird way. What? Um, we thought that Yuri was the one who who broke out that window. You pala, yung isang agent na tinirahan niya, si Tanaka. You pala na disguised as Yuri. The real Yuri is now in the, the business attire that um, these bodyguard, these, um, these, the, these cops were wearing. So, kaya pala siya nakatakas. <laughs> She eventually met up with the other god candidates and as part of the deal, binigyan siya ni Susumo ng wings. Tinapunan siya ni isang ring ganun. O yan, got your wings. Ayun, bigla lumibad na. So, 
Um, they were all back in the safe house except for Susumo. Um, kumaga, kumukontakt na lang siya by phone. Kasi, uh, wala pang tiwala sa kanya yung mga, yung mga ibang card candidates eh. Knowing that, well, they all, they all him, they, they know him all too well because he was the one co- who was controlling Metropoli man. Ah, from, I think from out of the blue, pinresent na yun ni, ni Shuji kung ano yung uh, gusto niyang gawin if, he's, if he becomes the next god. Eh, pero, well, siyempre, kukontrain siya ni Mirai. So, be, bigla na lang uh, sumingit si Susumu through phone. Through the phone na binigay sa kanya. Why don't we just uh, why don't we just um, put it through a vote? This is a democratic country after all. So, well, he's got a point. Okay, nagbotohan. Nanalo si Shuji. Nearly all the god, all the god candidates have agreed that Shuji should be the next god. Except for one. Si Professor Yoneda. Whom, hindi pa nila nakokontahan. But, based on uh, the information Mirai and Revel got, we, they now know who his uh, who his potential angel is. Si Muni. And according to, all, to Ogaro, she is known as the angel of destruction. Ayun, pinakita. So, what? Well, um, Yunenda is having dinner by himself. May champagne pa nga eh. So, pinakita si Muni. Eh, mukhang isa sa mga four horsemen of the apocalypse to eh. Angel ba talaga to? Eh, mag- And, I personally thought, Penema looked like, look more like a demon than an angel. Eh, mas masahol pala ito. Holy shit! They eventually... Uh, came into contact with Muni. Muni just explained the um, Yoneda's terms. So, discussion. Okay, discussion. Then, all of a sudden, um, four attack helicopters step in. Talagang, ang kasin eh. Talagang combat mode. So, well, Yoneda, who was watching uh, all of this, all of this from his cell phone, So was was a bit appalled. Teka. So namukha niya yung mga helicopter sa to. Depon Samia. The self defense force. Teka. Ano ginagawa niya diyan? This uh stepping in by the self defense force compelled him to call the prime minister himself. Uh being ano pala siya? Eh? Uh privileged ata yun ng mga national honor awardees ng Japan. They can personally talk to the prime minister. So ginawa niya. Eh, hey, tinanong niya, Mr. Prime Minister, ba, ano to? Why are those, why is the self-defense force here? Eh, the God Candidates are just having a talk with, uh, are, they, just, they look like they're just having a talk with someone or something. Inamin na ng Prime Minister that he ordered them there not to kill them but to secure them. Final scene. Eh, We just saw a distraught look on Yoneda's face. Sabi ko, sabi niya, Oh my fucking God. Is this guy trying to start World War III? Let's just break this episode down now. Quick stop style. Para, malimunan ka tayo ng konti. Pace. First, third, was a bit hilarious, pero fast yung pacing. Kasi nga tumataka si Yuri. Alright? It was a bit hilarious. The latter third, absolutely tense. Lalo na nung pumasok na yung mga yung mga attack helicopters ng self-defense force. And these are real combat helicopters. These are the type of helicopters that uh, that you would send out if you want to kill, if you want to take down a terrorist hideout. Ganong, ka, ganong katin dito. Pero in the middle third, ano eh? Uh... Moderate, moderate siya, kasi there was a, I don't, I don't want to call it heated, um, an active discussion going on between uh, between the five God candidates. So, tinag-usapan nila, okay, uh, you know, of course, Shuji's uh, making, stating his case if he becomes God, and Mirai is also stating his, his case if he becomes God. So, is, 
And so is, of course, um, urine. Right? And as dumbfounded as it sounds, it's it's still her case, okay? It's what she wants to do if, he, if she becomes God. So, discussion, discussion, then, Susumu just suggested, why, why don't we don't, why don't we just, um, put this through a vote? Magbotohan na na tayo kung sinong gusto mong, kung sinong gusto natin maging God. Okay, paayang naman lahat. And, but, yun nga, should you won the election? It was moderate kasi, it was a rather, you could say it's a political exercise. And, well, when it comes to politics, there's no slow pacing. <laughs> right? Even in real life, when politics are involved, nope, there's no such thing as slowing down. Moderate is the, um, is the, um, uh, it's the slowest pacing you could ever get from from any uh, from any uh, uh, from any scene of pol- any scene of political nature. Parang ganun lang yun eh. So, but do I have complaints about the pacing? No, nope. absolutely not. Dahil swak lang eh. And um, hindi siya roller coaster. Hindi rin siya no, hindi rin siya super dragging, right? Kasi this episode actually started in a really hilarious way because because of um uh Yuri's escape. <laughs> it was hilarious in nature. Medyo natatawa nga ako eh. It was well paced. Okay? It was well paced. Flow naman. First gear shift here was Shuji stating his case to become God during that um that conversation scene. Why did they call it a gear shift? Well, it didn't trigger the episode, but it completely gave the episode a 360 degree turn. Nag 360 ang ang istorya dito. Because before this, everybody accepted that um everybody um everybody's vote was unanimous. Mirai should become God. Pero, um, after hearing Shuji's case, and then Susumo suggesting that election, yeah, now, everybody wants Shuji to become God. So, talagang, this was the gear shift that will, that will make you feel uh, that it will make you feel that the storyline took a 360 degree, took an about face at least. Yeah. Yeah, that, it's an about face mom, moment for the entire anime. Second gear shift was when um, Muni finally showed who her god candidate is. Why did they call us a gear shift? Well, it's a first impression sort, first impression sorts of gear shift. Kasi, kung sa unang tingin, matajudge mo kagad si Yuneta na nako, mukhang di gagawa ng mabuti to. He's probably worse than Metropoli, man. Kasi, you know, usually, mad scientists are villains. <laughs> okay? Pero hindi. By the way, he was conversing with, um, with Muni, he's still showing respect uh, to the angel that made him a god candidate. Si Uryunon? No. During that um during that standoff he had with Mirai, eh pinagsalitaan ba naman niya pinagsalitaan din niya na masama si ano na ni si Misa. Then well, eventually although silently nilaglag din siya ni Misa doon. Hindi siya tinulungan na uh, yan nag nagre-request ng tulong. Yeah, for that for that fleeting moment, Metropolitan asked for help. Hindi siya pinagbigyan ni Mesa. Right there and then, nilaglag siya. So, dito, uh, nagbibigay galang pa rin siya sa angel na, na sumalba sa kanya. And made him a god candidate. So, he may look like a villain, pero, for the way he talks to his own angel, Parang ano siya eh. He treats Mooney like a consultant. Although, well, he doesn't need one. 
He's a brilliant scientist. Halatay. Eh. Um, talaga first impression gearship. Yeah. And he proved me wrong in that conversation scene na nagagawa siya ng masama sa mga ibang God candidate. Even though his angel is known as the angel of destruction. So, yeah. First impression basis. <laughs> okay. But it's still a gearship. It's, a, it's, still, it's still a gearship. Final gearship was of course the scene where um, yung mga attack helicopter ni, mga attack helicopter nagpakita na to um to secure the five god candidates there but it's a no brainer of a gear shift folks because for the first time since since metropolitan's demise here we go again stand up mode na naman ang anime and do i have complaints ah uh-uh. ah kaya nga ginawa kong gear shift to eh it's looks like Um, death and destruction follows the God candidates everywhere. And well, it. And of course, of course, Mooney is there because she is the angel of destruction. And wow, right? I mean, I can explain ko. Basa gearship siya. It's a very pivotal one. So there's three gearships that I saw. Hmm. The last one. Definitely will play a role not in the um if not in the next episode probably in the last five episodes of this anime. Plot wise. Hmm. Malinis. No side stories or backstories. Talagang pinakita rito yung um to call this that well basically Um, all the God candidates really want to talk it over as to who wants to be uh, as to um, who wants it most to become God who wants it the most right now si Shuji kasi through election and well we still don't know what um, what Yoneda's case is para siya ang piliing Diyos That's still up in the air. We all, I only saw I only saw the main continuity of the uh, um, of this episode here, folks. Wala wala siya talaga, wala siya side story or back story. Wala eh. I could not consider the conversation scene between Yoneta and Muni a side story. Hindi. It's an introductory sequence to It's an yeah, it's an introduction to um, To the final god candidate well we all know we all know Mooney from that from from the meeting of the angels no episode 16 or 17 yata and then 15 or 16 Pasa, right after right after metropolitan's death nakita nag, nag meeting si ng anim and uh yeah you will see Mooney there pero nag preside doon si ano ang, pres- ang nagpreside yata no, si Ogaro so that wasn't the first time that wasn't Mooney's first appearance in this anime it was actually that one in the in that episode I was talking about so but this is the first appearance of Yuneda so you can't, I, I can't discount that as a, as a side story because he's a right now he's a major character here Because he is a god candidate, and right now the villain, right now the sa villain ngayon is humanity, because of the prime minister's actions here. So everything that I've said about the plot, this will make you realize. Okay, eto ang uh, ipapadama sa inyo ng plot ng episode na to, dahil ganito kalinis yun. So, base flow and plot. We all came together for this episode, mga lifestyle. So, Platinum End Episode 18. Deserve. Two thumbs up. I really want to know what's going to happen in that uh, in that standoff between 
the self-defense force of the god candidates. So, will we expect Yoneda to um, to interfere? Pwede. Kasi, mali na itong ginawa ng ano eh. Itong ginawa ng Prime Minister. And, sinabi naman niya na ano eh. The god candidates are just there to talk. They're obviously talking to someone or something. And obvious, hindi niya sinasabi na Prime Minister na sa Prime Minister na God candidate din siya. Kasi, well, due to what's happening, he might be forced to show his true, to show uh, to the whole world that he too is a God candidate. So, baka, ma, baka mapilita na si Yuneda na na lumantad dito. And that would, be, that would be nice for the next episode. Kaya, hindi nyo pa natututukan ng Platinum End. Shame on you, mga ka-lifestyle! You're missing out on a really great anime! So again, Platinum End Episode 18! Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this anime, mga ka-lifestyle. Wow! Intak pa rin ang street niya. Galing! Galing talaga anime nito. So Patreon, wait for my next upload. And for those of you who are still stuck with the CHD, Chill lang. Just follow what this uh, what this finger is um, doing. Until then, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Hmm. So well, with nearly uh, the whole AR team complete, so nag- they embark on another mission. Pero to draw out the Sangvis. They go to the place uh, where, where where they got ambushed by these two agents. Yup, that same that same place sa pilot. Nandun yung yung bangkay ng isang uh, ng isang kasama na mga yung mga na mga bago nilang kasama na mukha nila. It's a uh, it's G43. So yeah, they gave it um they gave it a proper rest. And yun nga, while they were doing that, in-explain na ni M4A1 kung uh, paano nila nakilala ito si G43. Amidst all the chaos, biglang nag-consoli si M16. So, eh, siyempre, tanong, parang tanong ng parang concern ni M4A1. Nasaan ka pa? We can, we, can, we can pick you up. Then sabi ni M16, no, I still got some business to take care of. So, biglang... Of Olyan Combs. And, but, in a, but, it's obvious. Ken Chan overheard everything. Sinabi na lang niya kay M4A1. Don't worry. Right after the mission, we'll look for her. Yung palang, sinasabing unfinished business the M16 is with these two dolls. Okay, these are Griffin dolls. Yung isa, gusto siya talaga patayin. Si 416. Matagal na pala may galit sa kanya ito. It goes way back during it goes way back to their days with the National Safety Agency. So, ay nagpakpakan yung dalawa. Game of Cat and Mouse. Eventually, of course, M16 wins this um wins this game. Pero hindi niya pinatay si 416 dito. And what well, gave her a gave her a stern warning that you do not want to get into a real fight with me. For whatever he said that. Then, siguro nakalata niya, she calls out UMP-45. Well, medyo nangangasan sila UMP-45 at N-16. But, well, sinabi nila ni M-16 na uh, kapag nakita sila ng nakita-kita na silang lahat, they will, uh, they will tell, she'll tell the base that UMP-45 is dead. Now, final scene. Ito yon. After saying that, she says, I wish there's I wish there's no next time. So let's break that down. Critics of style. Pace. The only time the pace slowed down is when um M16 communicated again with um with the rest of AR team. That's the only time. Then the pace uh, picked up again when 416 
Common 6 started assaulting M16. So, kaya, a good, a good two-thirds of the episode was, was really tense kasi, uh, it was to another battle scene. Eh. It was to another, um, to another battlefield. Pero, it's a battlefield that's, that is all, um, that's all too familiar with the, with AR team. Kasi dito sila talaga, dito sila inambus na dalawang agents eh. So, they just, they just took the, um, they took the battle somewhere to some place that will, that uh, they'll be put at an advantage against these two agents. Pero, galing, right? Talagang, I had those, um, I had those, uh, those military anime feels in this one. Kasi, may kasama pang intrigue eh. Okay, ano ba tong, ano ba tong sikretong ito? What's, what's with, what, what's with squad 404? Now, do I have complaints? No. Nope. Not the slightest. Flow naman. First gear shift here was when Genshan realized that um, that they should take a closer look at the current uh, at, the, at the mission team's current situation. So, gumamit siya ng recon satellite. Why did they call it a gear shift? Because it was within because it, it was with this gear shift that um, well, mukhang nagkaroon na suspecha si si Genshan that uh, we have may, they may have been infiltrated by a high-end model or by um by squad 404 kasi i-deep dive nyo ang ang gearship na yon. why would she use a recon satellite to to know their current position. Why not use one of those high grade military satellites para talaga makita kung ilan talaga ang kalaban. But eventually the she saw uh, she saw where the where the enemy's positions are. Eh, pero ang, ang gulang nga niya, ang dami. The um, AR team and their um uh, AR team and their entourage they're outnumbered here okay they're outnumbered here as they say desperate times call for desperate measures and this gear ship may prove that final gear ship well that one was when M16 called out UMP45 why did they call it a gear ship well it just goes it just makes you think paano ba um, paano ba naging magkakilala itong si M16 at si UMP45 ng yeah, it looks it was the the um the, they've, known, they've known each other way before AR team was assembled first assembled so it just this gear should also make me think of um what M16's past was like before AR team. Kasi kung titignan nyo, before that, her fight scene with um with with 416. Para yung banggit ni 416 that um she's not so excited about this privilege that the privilege she, it has uh, has been given her until now. Uh, being a part of squad 404. Uh, well, if someone uh, they've been given the specific orders that if someone gets in your way take them out wala pa kayo nito kung kalaban o kahampi so why does she want to keep this team a secret squad 404 It really made me think. Ano ba tong nalalaman ni ni M16 na to? Has she been has she been keeping the secret um uh, for what you call this uh, for for that long na even before she she was selected to to join to join AR team? It really 
makes you wonder. Really makes you wonder. And ayun nga, may may na-detect nga na, na high-end model within the area dun sa inanong dun sa position ng nila M4E1. Nakita nila, nakita ni Ken Chan. And it's called the intruder. So it just well I don't know, kasi you can already list M16 here as the intruder. I don't know, pero um, why does UMP45 and 416 that hell bent on killing M16? Bakit? So, and what is Squad 404's real purpose? Ang dami. Ang daming ang daming tanong na lumabas sa gearship na to. So, it would really, really make a deep dive. So, these two gearships that I saw, both of them will play a role down the line in this anime. If not, the next episode. So, well, we'll have to keep tabs on that particular gearship. Yung, yung huli. Plot wise, Malinis. No side stories, no back stories. Puro kwen. If they want to, um, uh, well, courtesy of 416, na uh, alam na natin uh, a bit kung ano ang itsura ng nakaraan ni M16. So she was with the National Safety Agency before joining AR team. Does M4A1 know of this? Does the rest of AR team know this? Is this part of her past? Well, I hope so. Kasi kung lalagyan nyo ng backstory or side story ang, ang, ang isang episode na katulad nito, yung talagang nagpabakbakan tapos meron pang meron pang intrigang nangyayari because the um uh, the one that's happening with M16 is the side story itself. One big side story. Kaya ako sinabi malinis sa plot, dahil yung transitioning from the main continuity, which is the um, which is the battle scene, na involved ang ibang member ng ER team, to the one uh, M16 was having. Maganda yung transition. Two things were happening at the same time. Pero in order to justify their this as one big continuity ayun nilagyan nila ng parang scene yung scene na we're in uh, biglang nakipag-communicate uli si M16 kay M4E1 so yeah that, that's a good that's a good transition point yung subordinate ni M4E1 nakipag-communicate sa kanya uli and of course narinig uh, narinig ni ni Genshan ito yung conversation ito We will, we will start looking for her now. Malinis ang plot. Malinis. So, pace, flow, and plot. We all came together for this episode, folks. So, Dawn Spawn Line, episode 5 and 6. No fight. Ano yun? Me. Me. Me hangover pa ako from the last episode. Sorry. Mm. Two thumbs up. Bakit? Well, bottom line, M16's past has been has been partially uncovered here, and based on the info Genshin got that a well, a high-end model known as an intruder, known as the intruder, is within the battle area right now. Ang hirap lang dito, wala silang information about this about this particular high-end model. Wala. Walang information ng Griffin. So, does that make it dangerous? Absolutely. Alright? Because, well, ikaw nga sa G.I. Joe, knowing is half the battle. So, the good guys are left in the dark right now. So, ang lalabas sa suspect dito as the intruder, Okay, top 3 ko, si 
UMP 16. Si UMP 45 at si 416. Tandaan nyo, if, if you've seen the episode. M16 pins M uh, pins 416 to the ground. And sinabi and sinabi ni 416 dito, I am the superior doll. Who would be left to thinking that? Bigyan si 416 ang intruder. Are ah, because of what she because of what she said here. Eh yan ang typical language sa mga high-end doll. Mga high-end model. They they think they are the superior dolls. Agent down. Executioner down. Hunter down. The high-end models are yeah, yeah they're Owen 3 to be exact against AR team. So Sino ba talaga ang intruder na sinasabi eh? So those are my three likely suspects Sorry ka life, sorry mga ka lifestyle But we have to put M16 here as a suspect Kasi there's no info yet about this high-end model Kaya everyone basically fighting blind here Talagang kapag hihinalaan mo tatlong ito eh probably sort that thing out of the next few episodes right now we just cap off the um 13 episodes got done for the toss bot line ano? so next week will be the halfway point of this anime kaya tutok pa more so again toss bot line episode 6 Wait for my next upload. And for those of you who are still glued to the CHD, chill lang. You know, you see that? You see that pointing? You see that pointing finger? Yeah. Until then, enjoy the other reviews in this night. Akala natin ha, mapipigilan sila ni Kirin Maru, but no! They were able to get back to the Riwa era. So, oh, kita ya, medyo family reunion, 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 reunion. Then, well, before that, pinakita sa opening scene kung ano talaga ang well, hobby ni, ni, Kirin, ni Osamu Kirin, yung homeroom teacher ni Towa. He may be the right arm of uh, the former right arm of Kirin Maru, but his hobby is slaying demons. <laughs> Putang ina, demon hunter pala ito. He somewhat felt their presence. Ang tatlo. Eventually, they um, they crossed paths. Ayun, nakita, kita, nakita silang apat. But eventually, they, came to, they get to trust him. Especially when they found out that a major concert by a boy band is going to be um is going to be is going is going down that night. At ang guest si Mama Moy, they gotta protect her at all costs. On the night of the concert, that's when Kirin's story checked out. Talagang nagpro talagang ang daming marami siya ng demons na pinatay dito, okay? Especially the one that um that yeah that almost destroyed the concert because there are three actual demons that are coming to the stage. So the three had no choice but to but to but to engage them right there. But the one well, Setsuna decided for the three that no, we'll take this outside. So the cyclone burst to para patay si kita na basa ganon. Oh, de, do tayo. Tuwang tuwa ang Tuwang tuwa si si Kirin because he first he saw firsthand what the what um what the three can do. So sabi niya, wow, ang lalakas pa na naman ako bigo, yay, tama tama. Nakita nila right there and then. The grim comment is that near na. Pero wala na ako na sa comment na to. 
Eh, inexplain naman ni Kirin. Well, normal humans won't see the comment. So, that explains it. Okay. Final scene. Umakit sila sa Tokyo Tower. So, yeah. To, in to personally engage the grim comment. And, well, yeah, it's simply to find a way to find a way to destroy this humongous chunk of rock. Ang laki! So, eh, silang apat lang? Ikaw ni... Ikaw ni, uh, ni Moro, ha? Ha? Paano natin titipagin to? Ang laki nito! Even with our powers combined! So, yup, a huge task is ahead of them right now. Let's break this episode down now, Critic Sub style. Pace! The pacing was moderate. Kasi, nung opening scene, well, Kirin engaged some demons himself. Medyo tense. And, sabi ko, Uy, ano gagawin nito? Uy, demonyo yan! Ano gagawin mo dyan? Ayun, pinatay niya! Walang kaabog-abog! Mm. Tinigok! So, uh, uh, that's what satisfying part of the pacing right there. Then, of course, second half of the episode, they started engaging these demons na. It was a rather tense. Now, the pacing became uh, somewhat tense right there. Kasi, there's a concert involved. And, well, pag hindi sila lang ingat dito, magkakaroon ng collateral damage dito. Okay? And, of course, uh, a famous boy band is performing. Na, idol na idol ni... Ni May. Okay, yung... Kumbaga... Yeah. Pinsang buo ni Moroha ito. Pinsang buo ni Moroha to. Kasi kapatid ng... Kasi anak ng... Uh, anak ng Juhin niya eh. So... Wow. Okay. Um, but... Do I have complaints? Do I have complaints mga ka-lifestyle? Absolutely not. I absolutely... Uh, matter of fact, I love the pacing of this episode. It went fast when it needed to be. It went slow when it absolutely needed to be. Ganun lang yan eh. Flow naman. First gear shift here was the opening scene. Bye ko din ako na gear shift ito. Well, it purely explained what Kirin was actually doing besides being uh, being Toa's homeroom teacher. Besides, uh, besides being a teacher, day job niya. So, this gearship instantly told me that, Nako, hindi magpapaalipin kay Kirin Maru ito. Eh, ito mismo, putang ina, Demon Hunter eh. Potential ally for the three main protags? Absolutely. Second gearship was when, uh, nakita-kita yung ano, nakita na sila, si Kirin at yung tatlo. But, for me, this is the gear shift that triggered the episode. Tagal pa, no? Their alliance is needed here kasi, but, they're keeping two things in mind. Of course, number one is the Grim Comet. And number two, si Kirin Maru. So, kasi, well, uh, Kirin Maru is trying very hard to, um, to communicate with his former right arm. Pero, well, sinabi lang mismo ni Kirin, I will not let you start the degenerate age in our world. So he is referring to the Rewa era. Final gear ship. Nope, it's not the final scene. But the scene where Rico suddenly shows himself para bawiin si Rion. No brainer of a gear ship, folks. Because Kirin Maru needs Rion. Uh, he needs Rion to be uh, to be transported as well to the Rewa era. Gusto niya kasi gawing vessel si Towa. At doon ilalagay, doon niya ilalagay yung kaluluwa ni Ryun. Sinabi niya right here. I do not approve of your plan to to use Lady Towa as a vessel. So yun, talaga nakialam. Nakialam ng bonga-bonga. Now, Kirin Maru cannot can just proceed to 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 enter to enter the windmill of time kasi wala na sa kanya si Ryun. All right? Rico served as the monkey wrench in Kirin Maru's plan right here. That's why I called it a gear shift. Saludo dapat tayo kay Rico. Alright? Talagang, 
He was a hero here. He was the real hero of this episode. So these three gear shifts that I saw definitely will play a role in the upcoming road to the finale. Next week is episode 20, folks. Matatapos na po ang Yashahime. So, it's gonna be a very exciting final five episodes for this spin-off. Talagang ako, looking forward na ako. Plot lies. Malinis. For an episode as crucial as this, would you, since in a backstory or a side story, no! <laughs> It's out of the question. Kailangan this early, and especially if you if you know that um Yasha, that uh, that Yashahime is about to end with no guarantee of returning for another season. Dapat dito palang ang build up. Hindi na dapat hintayin pang road to the finale ang ang final five episodes. Dapat dito palang may build up na. And another side story or backstory will just destroy it. That's plain. That's the that's the plain truth, mga lifestyle. Kaya the plot was really clean. You need uh, a plot as clean as this to make uh, to instill in the viewer that sense of urgency, that um that excitement. Kaya wow, and, and uh, I felt excited. I felt that excitement. I felt the sense of urgency from. Uh, from Kirin and the three and uh, and the three girls, talaga na, na feel ko yon. Kung kung bigla may sumingit na side or backstory here, wala eh, mawawala. Nakamabitin ako. So thank God we got a um we got a really clean plot here. So pace, flow, and plot. They all came together for this episode, folks. So. Yasha Kimi the second act, episode 19. Diretso. Mm. Two thumbs up. I'm not going to um I'm not going to add uh something anymore to this episode because I've already said everything in uh from the rundown to to the rating. Kaya. So, ano ba ano pang gagawin natin mga ka lifestyle? Eh di oh, wait for next week for the start of the road to the finale. So again, Yashahime the second act, episode 19. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this spin of mga lifestyle. Wow, talagang may, may road to the finale feels pala. May road to the finale feels na ako right here in this episode. So Patreon, wait for my next upload. And for those of you who are still stuck with the CHT, chill chill lang. Just follow what the finger says. <laughs> But until then, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Ganun. Simple lang yun ang yari sa, sa episode na to. So upon announcement, okay, nag nag medyo nag patani si King Edward at si Warwick. Of course, eh. But, Warwick has a point there kasi Hindi na niya pwedeng bawihin yun. It's a, it's a compact with King Louis of France. Okay? With the King of France himself. Eh, si Ramin niya rito si Edward. You chose your own carnal desires over your country. And, eh, si na, sumbat naman sa kanya ni, ni Edward. I only have one, I allowed my obligation to God. Warwick's desire to overthrow King Edward has just begun. Right there. So, well, who's witness to it all? Si Richard. Then, in one scene, in approach ng Duke of Buckingham si, si Richard, who is, yeah, who is a few years younger than Richard. Eh, sinabi lang ni, ni Buckingham, well, the way I, well, proverbially, he said, the way I see it, you should also be king. Well, he has a point. Kasi, youngest son, uh, youngest brother ni Edward ni Edward III to. If he's not qualified as king, it should either be George or Richard. Pero, George, 
sided with Edward. And, well, at that point na nilapitan na siya ng Duke of Buckingham, Richard is taking no sides. Then, in-invite siya ni Warwick na mag na sa castle niya. And, well, and unbeknownst, unbeknownst to Richard, this is all part of Warwick's plan to, yeah, to win him over, basically. Before he could actually get Anne into his plan, Anne was already, well, unti-unti nang nawuhulog na talaga ang loob ni Anne kay Richard. And Richard is slowly feeling the same way. And in this episode, we have also confirmed that Richard was, Richard is female by birth. Eventually, um, Warwick was trying to convince Anne to, um, to get into his plan of, um, his long-term plan of overthrowing Edward III. Yes, yeah, si kuya ni Richard. Pero, hindi ayaw sumama sa plano si, uh, si Anne. Saying to to her father that uh, that she will not marry Richard on uh, with that in mind. Pero unfortunately, narinig narinig lahat ito ni Richard kasi he was about to visit Anne's room and may dala-dala siyang parang malit na snowman. Papakita niya. Dinamdam ni Richard. And mukha nakalata ni Warwick na 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 overhear sila uh, what Richard overheard their conversation. And, yun, know, sinabi na lang niya, patay. Napurnada ang plano. Final scene. Well, it's a grim way to end an episode, okay? An episode this early in the run. But anyway, Richard attempts suicide by drowning himself in the frigid waters of the, uh, in the waters of the frozen river. No, siya isang, yung, mat, yung, yung matalas-talas yung dagger, ginano niya yung yelo. So, it gave way, mm, nahulog siya sa, sa nanlalamig na tubig ng ilog na yun. And, well, obviously, he was committing suicide at that point. We're gonna break this down now. Critics of style. Pace! Hindi ko na niyo, pa. We're gonna, we're, we're gonna do the breakdown right now. So, it became slow and excruciating matter of fact during the second half of the episode. Bakit? Kasi, um, while Warwick was uh, scheming things against his, against his king, yung asawa ni King Edward, si Elizabeth Woodville, is scheming things of her own. But, right there in the episode, pinakita na Buntis na si Elizabeth. And, yeah, I... By the way, the episode was running. She is now being called Queen Elizabeth. In the opening scene, you see, you saw that look of distrust in Richard's face nung tinitignan niya si Elizabeth. Yeah, that's proof already. That, it's proof already that we are about to go through a slow and excruciating pacing in this episode. Ayun nga. It started right there in the second half. Nung, uh, let's run the second half kasi yung scene na yun eh. Nung pinakitang buntis na si Elizabeth. With, of course, with Edward's child. And she plans to use this child to, to overthrow King Edward. Para mga Woodville lang ang, ang nakaupo sa trono. You ask me, from, uh, just from the pacing of this episode, I can see only this. Elizabeth has a more diabolical plan than Warwick. I would, I would rather put my trust in Warwick more than Elizabeth at this point. Kasi, ultimong anak niya, gagamitin niya sa pagpapatansik sa pwesto kay Ed. Kaya uh, sa pagpapatat si kay Edward sa, Edward sa, sa pagiging king. Alright? To me, that's a diabolical plan. Do I have complaints when it, comes, when it came to the pacing? Hell no! Alright? 
This is the kind of pacing you will see in a Shakespearean play. Mga ka-lifestyle, I'm telling you, <laughs> magbasa lang kayo ng kahit na nung play ni William Shakespeare, you will get these feels instantly. You will feel that this is the kind of pacing you were, you're going to get once, uh, once you see this play visually. Once this play comes to life. Ganitong ganito ang pacing ng kahit anong Shakespearean play. <laughs> so, I got no complaints. I got no complaints, boys. Flow naman. First gear shift here was the conversation scene between Richard and Buckingham. Bye, ko din the gear shift. Well, finally, someone suggested that Richard should be king. It's a no-brainer of a gear shift, mga ka-lifestyle. According to historical fact, the Duke of Buckingham actually suggested this to Richard. He was still, he was only the Duke of Gloucester back then. And of course, Edward III, his brother, was the king. And what, well, according to, according to expert historians, the Duke of Buckingham talaga ang nagsuggest King Richard na siya ang dapat maging king. It's not Edward anymore and sure as hell, it's not George. The most mentally and physically, the most mentally capable to be king right now is Richard. And the Duke of Buckingham first saw that. It's a pivotal gear shift. Both here in this anime and in, and in English and in British history. Kaya sinasabi ko sa inyo eh. <clears throat> to check the correctness of what I am saying here in this review, go to the history books. Go to your nearest library. Or, there's Google. Google it. Richard III of England. Para! Pawag. First thing to prove me wrong. Alright? And of course, comment below. Second gear shift was when, yeah, the Yuri scene. <laughs> I'm now telling this as a Yuri scene kasi medyo confirm na because in a few scenes before that, kinonfirm na mismo ni Richard that um, that he is not a woman. Kasi ang kausap niya rito, si Joan mismo. Yung konsyensya niya. He, he was, he was already developing feelings for Henry in the last episode. Now, nauhulog na rin ang loob niya kay Anne. So, does that make him buy? Yeah! Okay. Confirmed. He's not, but you, you could, technically, that gearship is still a Yuri moment. Right? Pero why did I call this a gearship? Number one, it now confirms the sexuality, Richard's sexuality. The way I see it, he's bi. Right? Pwede siya sa, but, we, we, we Gen Xers have a term for that. ACDC. Pwede sa lalaki, pwede sa babae. The Yuri moment now confirms na so, pwede si Richard sa lalaki, pwede rin sa babae si Richard. <sighs> Grabe. Hindi <laughs> ko na-oriad dun. <laughs> it's, well, it's also the gear shift that will tell you that this episode also has shock value. Well, it's been back-to-back -back episodes already that, um, that this anime has shocked us all. Right? So, this gear shift confirms it. Final gear shift was, of course, the final scene. From the Yuri moment to this. It's proof, okay? This gear shift is proof that he has already fallen for Anne. And for him to hear that, that, that Anne will never marry him, Nabay, chakit. Kahit hindi, lalaki ka man o babae, sabihan ka man naman na gano'n. Ang chakit. Alright? So, halatang, well, it's obvious, dinamdam ni Richard yun. Kaya nga siya, kaya nga siya nag, kaya nga siya, siya nag-suicide at dito eh. 
sa sobrang sa sobrang sakit eh. So eh yeah, this girl will also tell you will also make you wonder now. Will he survive this? So these three gear shifts that I saw, um, yeah, all of them will play a role down the line in this anime. Hindi lang yung hindi lang yung final scene, hindi lang yung ano. All three of them, plot wise. Hindi. Wala akong nakita ng ano nito eh. Um, it's not even... A, there aren't even explainers here eh. Talagang... Talagang we, we got... We got totally focused on the main continuity of the... On... The one and only continuity of this episode. Kaya... Malinis ang plot mga ka-lifestyle. Although... Yung occasion na biglang... Put! Biglang sumulput si, jo, si Joan. Then... Um, then all of a sudden uh, nandun na si Richard para marinig niya sinabi ni Anna yun it's because of this really clean plot that um, it still kept me within those Shakespearean feels thing eh. But, uh, you understand it now mga ka lifestyle it's the the, the really clean plot of this episode. Okay? Yun ang uh, nagpanatili sa Shakespearean feels ko. It's not just the pacing. Pero yung yung uh, yung pagkakadeliver ng story um, on how well, of course to make it more anime-like to conform to anime standards. Yeah, nandun. Pero bottom line you can still see the bottom line of this anime through the really clean plot. You will have those Shakespearean feels whether you like it or not. So, pace, flow, and plot, they all came together for this episode, mga kalaistan. So, Requiem of the Rose King, episode 5, Tirecho! Mm. Two thumbs up! But the only thing we can discuss here now is what to expect in the next episode. For me, I won't expect any shock value because that's exactly what I did for this one. So I just told myself, okay, see, I'm gonna treat this as a new episode. Okay, siguro no shock, no shock value ito. But no. My mind was blown again. Twice! Okay? Twice in this episode alone. Kaya, um, if you're still missing out on this anime, shame on you! <laughs> Fucking shame on you! You know what I'm saying? So again, Requiem of the Rose King, episode 5, two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this anime, mga lifestyle. Wow! Yuri moment na suicide sipak. Oh, grabe. Shakespeare na Shakespeare yan nga. So Patreon, wait for my next upload. And for those of you who are still glued to the CHD, chill lang. Enjoy the other reviews in this digest.